Next time on Ding Dong Games. It's time to return to Emerald Omega to finish what I started. Now my strategies are better than ever, but man this game is no joke to Nuzlocke. This is going to be much harder than I thought. Can I survive this gruelling challenge? Find out in the next episode. Pokemon Emerald Omega is a very good ROM hack, but also a very hard one. I'm not joking when I say that the difficulty is somewhat comparable to that of Emerald Kaizo. But what makes Emerald Omega so much better than Emerald Kaizo is that where Kaizo's difficulty was really badly designed to the point of complete absurdity and unfairness, Omega's design is so much better, relying more on good strategies while giving the player many options such as infinite TMs, a physical special split and a lot of customization, giving you more control over your own playthrough. Last time, let's just say I had the technical difficulty while doing my Nuzlocke and I had to stop my Emerald Omega advanced Nuzlocke run prematurely, but this time I'm back for round 2. Now I'm prepared and I know that this game doesn't fool around with its difficulty. To win in this game, you have to get creative with your strategies. You know what, let's just start the advanced Nuzlocke straight away. This time I decided to pick Smoochum as my starter, as I'm yet to pick that one. Jinx is incredibly powerful however with its stat buffs, but be very careful of its low physical defense, it's pretty bad. Also I was unsure about picking Jinx, as Magmortar and Electivire are both in this game, and Jinx does have an evolution, but it's fine. My Smoochum had a really good nature and very good IVs, so that makes up for it. To be safe, I grind for the first maze fight as her Magpie easily counters me, so you have to overlevel to beat it with Smoochum. But after that I get the Pokeballs and can now properly begin the advanced Nuzlocke. The first Pokemon I catch is Puchiena, who got a big buff now with the new physical special split that got added to the game. It finally has a good physical move to use in Bite. I then got a Rattata and Zigzagoon, which to be honest is kinda bad luck. They're not helpful early game, where you ideally need to prepare for the first two gyms. I grinded for a bit, then I proceeded. Smoochum is strong as hell with its buff stats. After Pelberg, I catch a Surskit, a Pikachu and a Staryu. I will say that early game, you need some good luck with your encounters as your options for the first 3 gyms are limited, as you won't have that many Pokemon at that point. It's only after the 4th gym, where the game really opens up a lot more. Man it feels so good to have a strong physical move on Puchena. Remember Gen 3 when dark moves were all special? Yeah. Anyways the team acro grunt was a bit scary. Oh god I had Thief and I almost one shot my Smoochum. Oof. Things got tense against the Krabby but I got through it. Here above Rustboro City, I think it's a guaranteed Poliwag encounter with the Old Rod and you will need that Pokemon for Roxanne. Then after that I catch some more Pokemon but they weren't too useful, rounding out everything before the first gym. Hmm. A funny phrase? How about a hint to my next video? Stupid child. Okay, so now I'm done grinding, I'll go to the first gym battle. Honestly, I did overdo the grinding a bit. But you have to overlevel for this game for the most part. Polarwill was able to completely sweep because I timed the rain dance to cancel out the opponent's sandstream which Onyx gets in this game. Then just use water gun and ice punch coverage to easily sweep. So far so good. I better grind for the next Team Aqua battle, he's not easy. Did I mention that villain grunts have EV values in their Pokemon? The battle did get rough as Carvana hits like a truck with Thief and Radicate was problematic. One crit and I would have lost someone on my team. Luckily that did not happen. Then I'll gloss over this next rival battle as Maze Maccabi is surprisingly not a threat yet. Off to the second gym now and this one is much harder than the last one as at this point there aren't too many counters to fighting types. You need to have a good game plan for this as not even good type advantage on its own is enough to beat Brawly. However, there's something else that's also really important. Brawly's ace Pokemon Magahita has leftovers as its held items 
which is such an amazing item to have in a Nuzlocke. I really want some leftovers for my stall Pokemon, so my plan is to steal them off of the Magahita with TM Thief. But before I go to get the TM Thief in Slateboard City, I catch some more Pokemon. This Feebas is so good late game. Oh god, Brawly's gym is no laughing matter. The Pokemon there hit really hard and have really good strategies and good coverage options. Like this Focus Sash Krogunk who would have been able to one shot my Smoochum had it got a critical hit. I'm not taking any more risks, so I evolved my Smoochum into Jinx. This Pokemon is monstrous at this part of the game with its good stat buffs. Before I challenge Brawly, I decided to go to Slateport City first to get the TM for Thief. But while I'm there, I thought, screw it. Let's fight these Aqua Grunts in the museum while I'm here. Which, not gonna lie, was actually really tense. I kinda underestimated them. The difficulty spikes pretty quickly here. Carvana was a huge threat and could have easily crit me to death. But luckily that did not happen and after that, the Grunts go down. The last Pokemon I catch before going to challenge Brawly is Electric, which is actually pretty solid. But now it's time to prepare my team. This is surprisingly hard to do, as Brawly's team is very well rounded, even though they're all fighting types. A good strategy and game plan is vital. You cannot enter that gym battle with like, one flying type Pokemon and expect to win like that. I decided to put Masquerade on my team, as this is the only time in the whole run where it will be useful. I get the free Tokubi Egg which is so important, then I grind up the squad. I was so surprised when my Jinx reached level 26 and learned Draining Kiss, which is a very good move to use. Though admittedly, I did overlevel a little bit. Anyways, it's finally time to challenge Brawly, and I know that his lead Pokemon Meditite can use Fire Punch, so it's dangerous. This is where Drain Kiss really comes in handy. The Hitmontop waits a turn going for Bulk Up, so it gets wrecked. Now, I most likely could have also one shot the Heracross. But I didn't want to take the risk, so Tokatik one shots it instead as Heracross stupidly went for two bulk ups. At least it wasn't able to attack me, otherwise it would have dealt a lot of damage. The fact that Tokatik is bulky and can put things to sleep with the yawn is very useful. Now it's at this point in the battle where I try to play 4D chess with the opponent. I need to line up this battle so I can easily use FIFA Magahita, ideally without losing a Pokemon. I need my Masquerine, the Kale Combuskin then use Thief on the remaining Magahita to steal its leftovers. So luckily Masquerine manages to kill with the Combuskin. Then Magahita comes out, I use Thief, steal the leftovers, then easily beat the last Pokemon. Alright, the gym battle's over, and now I've got leftovers this early on in the game. These are going to be so useful, especially on my defensive Pokemon. After this battle, I clear out everyone in Slateport City, then go to challenge me. I know she leads off with Beauty Fly this time, so Jinx can easily lead to counter it. Her only threat is Magmar, but I brought Onyx with me specifically to counter it. With that, I already have to prepare for the next gym, and this one's just as tough as the last one. It's actually a lot more RNG dependent, cause Watson loves to abuse paralysis. Annoyingly, I didn't manage to catch any good Pokemon for the third gym. I do get given this free Eevee, which is such a good Pokemon. But there were two big problems here. First of all is I cannot get the Moonstone until I reach Meteor Falls which is after the third gym. I can get the other stones now which got added to the Pokemon here, but I really want Umbreon for my stall strategy, it has to be a Moonstone. But the really big problem here is that I checked my Eevee's IV values and it turned out that Eevee has literally the worst defensive IV values possible. This really pissed me off as I was so excited to use my Umbreon stall strategy. I mean, I could still use it, but it'll be significantly worse, it won't be the same. I mean, I can't use it against Watson anyways. One good thing is that I can buy a Pokemon from the game corner with coins this time. As per Nuzlocke rules, I can only choose one, so I decided to pick Tyroke as my one Pokemon here. God, this Pokemon ended up being so useful. After that, I do a whole bunch of grinding. I farm some heart scales then later go to challenge Watson. His team is no joke as he loves to abuse power hacks, but I was prepared. Well, not for the Raichu. I thought it might have had Surf, but was unsure. Drats. Goodbye Onyx. The lovely kiss on Jinx is super strong, but this misplay I made here was so dumb on my part, it was so stupid. I forgot that Porygon had Trace and traced my Jinx's Insomnia, basically negating lovely kiss and wasting my turn. 
This was so stupid, but thankfully it didn't end up mattering. I have to switch out here, as I know Minetric has Flame 4, and I absolutely cannot risk my starter here. It's just too important to lose to a critical hit. Luckily, it uses Crunch as I switch in Hitmonchan. Had I kept in Jinx, it probably would have died, so that was lucky. Hitmonchan was my trump card, who sets up with Bulk Up and spams Dream Punch. I was really surprised when Hitmonchan learned Dream Punch, but here it's such a good move. Luckily, Minetric does not get a critical hit, and Hitmonchan has great special defense, so after beating Minetric, it sweeps the rest of his team with Dream Punch. Man, Hitmonchan's awesome. Moving on, I beat the Winstreet family to get the Macho Brace item, which I will be using pretty soon. I lost my Tiena, as I've got no counter to Meditite, that thing's a monster. My next world encounter, Commit Suicide. Man, it really hurts my feelings that this coughing would rather kill itself than be caught by me. That, that really hurts my feelings. I catch a few more Pokemon, continue grinding to round off my team. The daycare center is definitely the fastest option for this, as the well encounters are not the best for grinding. They don't give off that much XP. Oh yeah, I caught a Magikarp, and now it's a Gyarados. Now I've got Umbreon, and this is where the Macho Brace comes in handy. To make up for Umbreon's awful IV values, I do some EV training in this cave, as almost every single encounter gives an HP value. I combine this with the XP share in the Macho Brace to essentially gain 3 HP values at a time, giving Umbreon and my other Pokemon some nice gains. I do this for a little bit, and I do it for my other Pokemon also. The thing is in this game is that the AI does use EV values on your Pokemon, so it's a good idea to EV train properly yourself. Otherwise, you're at a huge disadvantage. After all, gaining something like special attack EV values in Umbreon isn't going to help at all. I'd rather it gains HP values. Now that I've finished grinding and my team is ready, I challenge Maxi, and his team is tough. The main threat was his Typhlosion, who hits like a truck. It also sets up Sunny Day, and I could have stopped it had I taught my Hitmonchan Mac Punch, which I should have done, but alas, I did not. It triggered its Pitaya Berry and the Blaze Boost, making Typhlosion monstrously powerful. It was able to one-shot my Staryu. Yikes! <laughs> Luckily, Minetric outsped it and finished it off. The battle was going well until Camerupt came out, and now I've got no counters for this. With the sun up, Camerupt hits too hard, and of course the Confused Ray did absolutely nothing to it, because of course it didn't. Okay, this is getting hot. Time to Paton pass out here and... What? You've got to be kidding me. A quick law. Here of all the times. No, you reminded me of the last time, you bastard. The last time camera up used quick law. Oh, God. I was really, really not happy about losing Umbreon. For God's sake. I love Umbreon. Such a good wall. I had a near miss in Flannery's gym, it's pretty close. Damn, that's a lot of levels. Okay, time for the next gym battle, with the whole squad at level 43. I know that her lead Pokemon Ninetales is a threat, because it's got the drought ability, so, so I try to play around it with my Rain Dance users. The only issue is that Ninetales also has Sunny Day to annoy you, so you have to line up your plays properly. God, Will-O-Wisp is not nice. Even though Ninetales use Sunny Day, it's fine, Is it'll just run out eventually, then there'll be no more Perma Sun, so I can at least do that. Luckily, it didn't manage to burn my Hitmonchan, so that was good. I then took out Ninetales. But unfortunately, Tokatik did not get so lucky, as it got finished off by a critical hit, which definitely mattered. That was one of my best defensive Pokemon, damn it. But what happened next was actually really weird. I set an Exploud, which to be honest isn't a very good Pokemon. I trained it up just to replace Jinx, as Jinx wouldn't be that useful in this battle. Overall, Exploud is kind of expendable as it's not very viable, and I was willing to sack it for an easy victory. But weirdly enough, the Clefable attacked Exploud with Solar Beam when two Fire Blasts could have finished it off. Guess it was scared of missing? Then luckily after that I got a critical hit on the Victory Bell, which definitely mattered, but I guess it evens things out. Then I just sweep the rest of the team. 
This battle does require more strategy than the other gym battles, due to the weather control. Definitely bring some water types for this. I go to the desert, and I'm allowed to take two fossils which is great. I take Lilip and Aerodactyl. Damn, this Urshering is scary. So I train up and go to challenge Norman. This battle was not easy. Unfortunately, I cannot get Thunderbolt yet. And I thought this lead Taurus might have Earthquake, so I took a risk. Turned out it did have Earthquake. Damn it. The AI here is actually pretty big brain, because they purposely go for different moves to finish you off, anticipating a switch, which is pretty cool. Huh? That's pretty smart on the AI's part. This Earth Ring was annoying, as it didn't hit itself in confusion at all, because... Of course. But then I noticed that it just kept spamming the move counter, so yeah, Polarath can easily take it out with muddy water. Lightning has thunder, so you need to look out for that. But I almost got destroyed with this Gramble, which I was just able to take out with Poison Jab. Did you know that in this game, Power Up Punch has a base power of 60? Damn, that's strong. Kangaskhan uses... Oh no! <laughs> well... That just happened. And here, the last Pokemon slacking. It goes for... What? Not again. I even tried to play around it with Bounce, but... That did work. Oh, not my Gyarados. I won this gym battle. But at what cost? Really, this battle is not too hard if you know that he uses counter. But if not, you'll be in for a surprise. The only way to go is forward. I have another training session and carry on with 5 Pokemon for now, as the ones on my PC aren't that good. I did pick up TN Thunderbolt and love how it's infinite. It's such a good change. I'm at the Weather Institute and the Team Aqua Grunts really are escalating in difficulty. They really are at a similar level to the ones in Emerald Kaizo. I go to clear out this place and... Oh come on! <laughs> now I know that this Pokemon is capable of learning Miracle but I didn't expect it to run it and use it here. Oh man. Now I need to train up another electric type. I liked Minetric. That's one of the few problems with this game is that grinding is slow. Unlike in Emerald Kaizo, the Wild Encounters do not give a lot of XP and I don't know if this game has a lucky egg in it. I still have to rely on the daycare center with 1000% speed up while training up my replacement Magneton for Minetric I decided to buy one Pokemon from this NPC Meteor Falls, and I chose Axu, as it can do some setup shenanigans with Dragon Dance. Time for the next May battle, and while her Magmar is scary, the Perma Rain helps me out, though it most likely has Sunny Day also, so do not underestimate it. Of course I missed three Hypnosis in a row. But the last Pokemon on May's team, Ampharos, uses Tail Glow, and it one shots Exploud, Jesus that's strong. Well this did make me sad, Exploud was expendable at the end of the day. That was a bit tense. I catch the Kecleon then... What? It... It... It got one shot. I've got no counter to this. Oh my god, the trainers in the last route for level 47, and this one is way stronger already. Now what do I switch into this? Oh my god. Well, that just happened. I need to grind again. I spend the next several hours grinding, even with a thousand percent speed up. I had to use the daycare center, which was not fun. You can rematch trainers, but that's pretty awkward to do and arguably more time consuming. But I get a whole new team to a good level, and I'm finally able to challenge the next gym leader. Remember that the gym leader EV values get higher and higher the more they progress, so their Pokemon get more EV trained. Winona leads off with... Gardos. I don't like the look of this. It oh my- Jesus Christ, I did nothing, it- Oh no. I'm screwed. I'm dead now. How the hell can I stop this Dragon Dancing Gyarados? I've got no switch-ins. It almost certainly has Earthquake. 
I need to come up with something fast or I'll definitely get swept here and now. Okay, so here I predict that Gyarados will go for Bounce. And I switch in Haxorus specifically to set up with Dragon Dance, which should allow me to get in one strong hit. Oh, not good. But, I calculated that Aerodactyl is able to outspeed the Gyarados even with the Dragon Dance, so I managed to switch in the Aerodactyl safely and... Phew! I'm alive after that. No casualties yet. That was so scary. But that's only the first Pokemon on Winona's team. There's still five more Pokemon to go. Oh well, that's actually a relief. Time to move on and oh my god, what is happening here? Wow. Well, back to grinding again. I get given a level 50 Lapras here, which is actually amazing, but I've already got two good water types, so I don't need it right now. I caught a Duskull and an Oddish later on, which are great additions to my team, as they're good at taking hits and can stall really well. You need defensive Pokemon in hard Nuzlocks. Then, before I go to grind them up, I decided to challenge me again for the last time, which does sound really reckless doing this before grinding, but it ended up working out really well. Her lead is now a mill tank, but I came up with a cheesy strategy to win this. Haxor is set up with Dragon Dance and Sword Stance, then spam Dragon Claw in Sweep. Easy. Damn, she's got a Magmortar. If only my Jinx could have evolved. So now I grind for hours, and oh my god, this was not fun. It's approaching Emerald Kaizo levels of grindiness. This really does detract from the game. It is a pretty big problem, to be honest. I love the well designed difficulty, but having to delay your progress for hours at a time is so not fun. Eventually I finish grinding and evolve three of my Pokemon, which is really cool. So now I can continue on with the game. Oh no, not this thing again. I didn't think I'd have to see another Wobbuffet again. Oh, be gone. Phew, now I'm at Magma Hideout, and I'm glad that this place isn't nearly as bad as it was in Emerald Kaizo, with the Perma Sun and incredibly cheap trainers. Ah, so far these trainers are pretty easy. Well, turned out that I was wrong. There's this optional battle here. Who is this person? I don't think she's in the original game. Oh, Magma Admin Courtney. Well, she looks tough, she's got six Pokemon. I'll have to be very careful and... Jesus Christ, what is happening here? Her team's ridiculously strong. Her first Pokemon was a Hypodon, which I didn't record that part of the fight, but the rest of her team, it has to be fully EV trained or something. I'll let this battle speak for itself, but look at her Pokemon. Look at the level difference between her team and mine, and look how much damage she deals to me versus how much damage she takes. It's crazy! Should have used Dragon Dance, but I did not expect to get outsped there.
And just like that, it's over. I got completely destroyed. I was shocked. I was caught off guard a lot, but our team was so strong. Despite our level difference, her whole team was able to completely outdo me. Her Pokemon must have had like max IVs and EVs with optimal natures because it was crazy how strong they were. I think she's an optional boss battle also, but damn, I did not expect this. Anyways, the Nuzlocke is now over. My team has been destroyed. To be honest, I don't think the late game is doable anyways with advanced Nuzlocke rules as the grinding process becomes a bit too much and it only gets worse and worse as the game progresses. It's approaching Emerald Kaizo levels of difficulty. The AI in this game is very capable. Not only are the Pokemon of many NPCs EV trained, but the teams are very well designed with good coverage and a lot of these Pokemon are hard to counter effectively. Similar to Renegade Platinum. However, Renegade Platinum did not require hours upon hours of grinding, which is what makes that game better than Emerald Omega. But overall, if you want an extreme Pokemon Emerald challenge then, Emerald Omega is a good choice, better than Emerald Kaizo at least. Yes, the AI is very strong, but at the same time, you the player are given a lot of options of your own to use, and with good team building and strategy, you too can find creative ways to get past challenging boss battles. This concludes the video, and it's now time to move on to my next project. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Ding Dong, signing out.